Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a really interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the uh, Urban EDC Supply F5.5. Uh, that's an exclusive. This is a collaboration with Jesper Voxnace. A lot of people were saying that kind of looks like a, you know, a fancy Pilar, Pilar, however you say that through CRKT. Yeah, uh, it's actually the same designer. So good eye. Thank you so much to Urban EDC Supply for sending this in for review. At the time of this video, the pre-orders are still available for this knife. Uh, this exact one right here, Urban EDC F5.5 M390 in titanium with Segeha. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, pronounce that. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of versions. There's M390 in titanium with this beautiful pattern right here, which I really like. And then there's the bronze one with the LMAX blade. Both are for the same price. You guys can check those out. I will link them down below, but I pre-record my content. So by the time you guys are seeing this, it's a few weeks in the future, right? Anyways. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'm very excited about this. And I'm going to tell you guys right now before I even get into the full review. This is likely, uh, you know, I just did a video here recently about my favorite knives of 2021. When I had recorded this, I had not, when I had recorded that video, I had not, uh, you know, uh, handled this one yet. As soon as I handled it, I was like, oh boy, that definitely would have made the list. This is absolutely one of my favorite knives. Now, I understand that this design may have, not, I'm not sure when the uh, first uh, F5, you know, the one that they did through Urban EDC Supply, I'm not sure when that came out. But as far as this particular variant, this is one of my favorite knives of 2021. So, hair splitting there, but um, we'll see how that works at the end of the year as far as how I do the video, but this is very good. Uh, we'll talk all about it. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. So the overall length of the F5.5 coming in at about seven inches. If we go all the way to the back of that lanyard hole, blade length is coming in at 2.9 inches, which is a big deal to people who live in areas with a three inch blade law. That's really cool that they did that. A lot of these designs that are more compact around the seven inch mark, they cut it off right at three inches, which can be problematic you know, it, a lot of times it, that, that'll still get you in trouble. This is definitely 2.9 inches, no question about it. Blade length is coming in at about 2.6, something like that, 2.65 inches. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and its little brother, the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here that this is about just a little bit shorter than the Ontario Rat Model 2, but because of its height, it, it certainly has a full knife presence. Uh, if that makes sense, how about up against the Spyderco PM2 and Spyderco Para 3? Again, closer to the smaller size one, but still smaller than the, than the uh, Para 3. Cutting edge, though, it's actually got about the exact same amount of cutting edge. You can see the ergonomic lines are actually very similar to the Para 3, with just a little bit less overall room. Last but not least, the Benchmade Group Tillioner. Where is it? There it is. Benchmade Group Tillioner, in this case, the Ruder Hogan, its little brother, the Mini Grip Tillion. Definitely about the same size as the Mini Grip. But with the inclusion of that forward choil, a little bit more room to get your hands where you want to put your hands. Let's go ahead and talk about carry profile thickness up against the Spider Co. Para 3. You can see this is not a thick knife. It's, yeah, it's exactly the same thickness. You know, when you come up here to the, the flats of the scales, right? It's exactly the same. How about length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3? Yeah, uh, shorter and not as tall. So this is gonna be a fairly easy object to carry for a lot of people. Something I really appreciate. Let's go ahead and do the hardwood check on this guy, get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in the My Tools section, uh, which will include, of course, like my flashlights, my watches, things like that. Uh, everything that you see here on the channel. Um, I believe everything on this knife is T8. Yeah, that's really, that's really nice. Everything with the pocket clip screws, which is fine. Those are T6, uh, but everything else is T8. Considering the construction of this, it should not be hard to take apart. Wonderful, A+. plus. No issues with that whatsoever. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. Get out my calipers. 
Blade stock thickness on this guy is coming in at 154,000. So it is curiously kind of chunky on the blade, but because of the grind, I'm sure you could imagine it does thin up quite a bit down towards the edge, so no big deal. Pretty similar to a lot of your zero tolerance knives, or at least your old school ones. I don't know what the new ones measure. Wait, what are we looking at on the inside of this? We've got titanium scales. We have a, believe it or not, a titanium countersunk liner for the lock, but no internal milling. None anywhere. I'm going to guess this knife weighs four ounces. Okay, 4.34 ounces, which is going to be a little heavy for some people, right? Uh, ratios, and some people are going to be disappointed with that. But, you know, if you look at it the way that I look at it, it's a 4.3 ounce object that carries fairly thin or as thin as the pair of three uh, and fairly compact. Uh, me personally, I would have no problem with this. The only type of shorts I wouldn't wear this in it would be like athletic shorts. Almost everything else I'm going to be okay. I really like the size of this. And sometimes I like, you know, having something fill out the hand, having something feel a little bit more solid just to, I don't know, have that whole sense of this is here, this is on your person, right? Sometimes like with the bug out, it's like, am I carrying a knife? I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, the, the, there's, there's something to be said there. So definitely not a huge knife, definitely not a heavy knife, right? Ratios aren't perfect, but... If you're like me, that's not going to bother you. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. They did a version of this a while back in Micarta and LMAX, different colors of Micarta. Apparently, it went over really well. Uh, I'm ashamed to admit that I was not aware of this at all uh, up until they sent me this one, and I lost it. I actually called them immediately after I opened this, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I love the look of this absolutely love the look of this uh i've said i've got a specific look for the handle scales that i like i like to see straight lines i like to see you know areas that are good suggestions for where to put your index finger but not commands right it's not a requirement that you put your fingers there areas uh that separate you know these sort of kind of open canvas areas and this more of like a hey you should probably put your you know index finger here they're knocked down here so it's not like if you were to choke back it would be uncomfortable no it's all nice and comfortable you can choke up ergonomically this is really really nice uh there were a few people in my comment section during the unboxing saying maybe you should make it a little bit bigger i believe the original f5 was bigger and, you know, part of me, like, really likes this size. And for some people, this is going to be the only option because of where they live. This size, even somebody like me who's got, I'm not going to say large hands. I'm going to say, you know, fairly normal size hands for a male. Uh, I wear an XL glove, right? So there's a lot of you watching with the same size hands as me. This is really nice, and you can definitely choke up, and it feels comfortable, Right. Back here, good. Pocket clip, a little bit of a hot spot. We're going to talk about that later. But as far as the ergonomic lines of the knife go, this is very, very good. I will say for me, I think it would be even more comfortable if they did do. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to tell them how to do their thing. But I think it would go over real well if they did a full-size version of this. Uh, in this same production sort of format. If they did an 8 to 8 and a quarter inch version of this. Um, so we're looking at something along the uh, lines, uh, the same size as the Spider Coat PM2. I think that would do really well. Um, they would have to mill it because that would be a big old heavy boy, right? But you could keep the, you know, the titanium and, and scales and the uh, blade stock thickness the same. And I think a lot of people, maybe with larger hands, might find that a little bit more appealing. Or people who just aren't restricted by laws and would just like a bigger one. That's not to say that there's any issue with this. Um, it's just some knives, you know, when I handle them, if they're smaller, some knives scream, hey, a bigger version of this would also be excellent. Not necessarily better, but also excellent. So, uh, yeah, they'd have my, they'd have my money on that for sure. I personally did <laughs> request one of these, uh, for order because I got to send this one back. Um, but yeah, about one day after I picked this up, I was like, I, I have to have one of these. So if you're wondering, yes, I'm definitely going to own this. Um, but yeah, the ergonomic lines are good, uh, and they feel it feels comfortable. Um, just because it is a smaller object, you have a larger hand, you might feel a little bit crammed in there, but it's not an uncomfortable crammed, right? It's just because the overall handle space is shorter than it would be on a larger knife. 
Let's talk about these scales. Oh my gosh. Now the other one, the bronze one, doesn't have nearly as much going on here. This is that pattern that I was trying to pronounce earlier and failing miserably. This is so beautiful how they do this, right? Little arches and then there's a little milled holes and then they have a line that they've milled all the way around this. It follows the outer lines of the scales and it sort of keeps every uh, all of the details from this this pattern it, it keeps it confined into this specific space the the pattern's not spilling out over uh, the outside of the scales right so we get to see the chamfer right the bevel here and then part of the flat then the dip from the milling line and then the pattern and it really makes the handle scales pop i like this this is part of the like i'm a big fan of tight you know textured titanium just period right but this is a perfect example. If you do that and then you do it in a specific way, you can add so much. This The handle scales just pop so well on this and it's beautiful. I wouldn't change a single thing about how they did this. Look at this, how they you know brought it around the screws. They, they bring these little sort of peaks, it rises up to con uh, bring the flat of the titanium out and create this perfect circle around the screw. It's so nice how they do that. I really like this, and I like that the handle scale uh, or the pivot screw is totally flat. This is just beautiful. Uh, all of this, the transition from the titanium to the backspacer, right? Uh, it's just wonderful. I love it. Uh, I love that this is not an exposed frame lock and, and instead a countersunk titanium liner lock. Yes, it is titanium. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Why is that so wonderful? Well, this isn't necessarily a skinny knife, but if you can imagine with me, if this was an exposed frame lock, you'd have to make sure that you were putting your fingers in the right place before you deploy it so that you don't put excess pressure on that exposed frame lock. And then by extension, the, uh, the detent ball right into the detent hole, right? No, you can push as hard as you want. You can squeeze as hard as you want because it's a titanium liner lock and it's countersunk. I love that. Love that. Always. I'm at the point now where I will just prefer that over uh, any frame lock, right? I still like frame locks, but I think this is a better setup. Wonderful. The access to it is great. It's risen just enough above there that you can get your fingers in there. You can see the little, uh, they've got some jimping in there, right? Yeah, if you push straight down and push it over, somebody's telling me, oh, that'll pinch your finger. Yeah, if you push straight down into it, but they don't want you to push straight down into it. That'd be a bad design. They want you to come in from the side. That's why they milled this this area a little bit lower or cut this area a little lower right here it works perfectly. You can see there my your finger, even if you miss that little nub there, which is fine because it's still not a double clutch, you're going to fall right into that forward choil, right? So you can see right there and then fall. Great. Reverse flick, no problem. You see me doing this the whole time here. Forward flick, that little, that that hole there is, is uh, there's plenty of access to it um, uh, and nice and large too. So you reverse flick, anything like that. Just over and over again, your your fidget factor with this guy is great. And like I said, there's no double clutch. If you want to just open it, right? If I'm going to carry this knife, I'm probably going to do this. Pull it, open it like that. Perfect. Perfect. You can be fancy. You can be flashy if you want to, right? You can sit around on the couch and play with it. Or when it comes time to use it, you can just open it. It's ready to go. So good. Uh, it's just... It's very good, guys. This is that's this is the kind of stuff I like to see. You can see how they marked it M390 in here, which is fantastic. This knife, they chose to let us enjoy the aesthetic and not and not, nothing against the design like designers and manufacturers when they do this, right? I get it. You want your, your brand awareness, you want you want your name up there so people know. This says M390 and nothing else. And it says, it's they even hid the M390, right? Everything. We get to enjoy the aesthetic. Nothing on the pivot, nothing on the body, nothing on the blade, right? Beautiful. Beautiful. That's, I love that. That's so good. I wish other designers and collaboration, you know, projects and these, these uh, retailers, all of them, I wish they had taken note from this. This is what we want to see. We bought the object, right? This is what we want to see. It's it's beautiful, just how they do it. Here's something else that I see on a lot of, I think a lot of, well, not necessarily just Jasper Vox designs. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name. The jimping is extended and uh, 
you know, it's it's uh, specific to this one area up here, and that's because that's where your thumb goes. It always cracks me up when I see like a little bit of jimping right here in this little area, and I'm like, that's not where my thumb goes. My thumb goes up here. Like, if I'm gonna cut, if I'm gonna be power cut, and I'm gonna hold it like this, right? I don't need that jimping digging into this part of my hand. I'm ne I'm almost never holding the knife like this. I'm doing this draw cuts, which by the way, it works perfectly for you. See that? Space that choil, use that for your middle finger, index finger up here on the nose, and then you can brace back here on the frame with your thumb. Draw cut, right? The sheep's foot. Oh my gosh, EDC heaven. This is the kind of stuff that I'm doing or I'm opening packages, right? If I'm gonna do some precision work, right? You're gonna, you know, make some feathers or whatever with some wood, and I'm not the, I'm not the guy that's outdoors in, in the woods all the time, right? So I might not be giving you the right circumstance, but if you're going to try and do some sort of peely precision cuts like this, where does your thumb go? It goes here, and they put the jimping in the right spot. <laughs> I love that, I'm like, oh, yes. Oh yes, that does fit perfectly. Thank you for doing that, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, I love it. Inside of this hole, guess what? It's been knocked down. See those nice little bevels in there? Beautiful, thank you for doing that. Up on the spine, uh, up here gets a little bit sharp, but that's not really where your hands are gonna be. I mean, even on draw cuts, your finger's gonna be up here, so eh, I don't really care. I will say, you they could have, what would have done it for me, right? And this is a preference thing. You guys have heard me say a million times over that I'm over the belt satin finish look, and I am. I'm over it. I like that nice reflective tie here. I got a knife right here, one that's coming up for review. I'll show you what I love. Much less expensive knife. Look at this. This Alien Knives DX2. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. That looks much more premium to me. A fine grain tumble and polish, right? Spine's not crowned on this guy. Could do something like that. Could I mean, I couldn't imagine it costs that much given, you know, this is a less than a $100 knife. And then crowning the spine, which is something that we've seen from other Fox Anzo designs. Jesper, Fox Nace, and, and uh, Jens Anzo. Oh my God, I know that I mispronounced it. I'm so sorry. But I've seen that before and it's beautiful. That would have... Abs this is fine, the way that they've done it. It's very nice, and it's very utilitarian, and I'm very happy with it. But it would have sent me over the moon to see that, you know, that slight reflectivity and a tumbled finish and a crown spine. Not a big deal, though. I'm just like, wow, it's perfect. I want it to be perfecter. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, okay, there it is. Um, edge, it does come down to a fairly thin edge. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. You can see here the taper. Pretty nice, right? Definitely going to be a strong blade considering there's not really a, there's a tip, but it's not like a, you know, a dedicated, like, like the PM2, right? So you'll be able to kind of poke into stuff and then cut, but this is more of a just, it's more of a cutter slicer, right? So that's the kind of stuff that you, it, it'll be perfect for what you're going to do with it. Absolutely. So the blade, yeah, it's great. No issues there. Just kind of saying my wants, right? <laughs> um, there is a stop pin. Oh, I just... It's a good thing I have a little bit of dead skin. <laughs> I just got, it is sharp. That's, that's fresh, right? It's just dead skin. It didn't get me all the way, but it did get me on the way back. Um, the, uh, there's a stop pin. You can see it right there. And you can see that there is just a hint of shouldering. Yeah, there you go. Pretty nice. I like that. Uh, the blade is not able to be touched unless you dig your finger in there, which is not something you're going to need to do, right? Um, so you should be fine. Uh, backspacer, I love it. Gear pattern backspacer that comes out to a lanyard hole. It's not really in the way of anything, and it's not necessarily being prioritized. It's in its own space of the knife, so that's fine. So lanyard people, there you go. Uh, the pocket clip is a deep carry clip, and this is all that's going to be sticking up out of your pocket. I like this clip. This is one of my only nitpicks. And I said this when I called in to 99% of the call was me ranting and raving. I was like, this is so excellent. I love this. I can't believe I didn't know about it. Um, so this clip uh, is good. Deep carry, right? It comes straight, then it dips and comes back up. I like the continuous rise in and out of the pocket. And functionally, this thing works just fine. 
right? The, the whole pocket clip function, it, it, as far as whether or not it's doing its job and making it easy to get in and out of the pocket, yes, it does that. It's a bit too prominent though, and it's because of this straight, then drop, then bill. I think the bill could actually sink down a little bit and not stick up so high. I think it's the proper length, but it's because it's so like, me, it's kind of wanting to get into my fingers here, right? Uh, I'd also like the pocket clip to start dropping from back here. It's a pocket clip that I always use as a perfect example of what I'm talking about is the MXG deep carry clip, right? You can see that the, the bill is not quite raised as high as this guy. It's down a little bit, right? It's knocked down at the edge is a lot like this guy is, but it's down a little bit, so it's not quite digging into my hand as much. And since it's starting to drop, the taper starts from back here. It doesn't quite feel like this big, tall shelf that's in my hand. You know what I mean? Doesn't need to be as long, but that's what I'm talking about. Not quite as prominent of a bill, and I think the taper or the drop from the pocket clip should start much earlier, and I think that that would have been a home run. I'd give that pocket clip like a B or a B minus. I mean, functionality, like in and out of the pocket, holding the knife to your pocket, yeah, sure, A+. plus. But as far as like the experience that it gives in the hand, the ergonomic lines on this knife are great. They're only held back by the pocket clip. That's what I'm saying there. But is it a deal? should it be a deal breaker? No, it shouldn't be a deal breaker for anybody. There's too much good here to get hung up on the, you know, the minor nitpicks. <laughs> Some random YouTubers, minor nitpicks of the pocket clip, right? No. Don't don't get hung up on that. Pocket clip is titanium as well. Other than that, this knife is much the same on the back as, as it is on the front. This is right hand tip up only. So lefties, sorry. That's kind of a bummer. But if they milled a spot over here for this pocket clip, this is one of those situations. Usually I say the opposite. They mill a spot over here for the pocket clip. It definitely would have taken away from this nice uniform look that they've got with the uh, the pattern, right? So basically what I'm saying is that I... It's kind of a crappy thing to say. I care more about the beauty of this item than I do, you know, left-handed people getting a hold of it. It's not what I'm directly I guess it's what I'm indirectly saying. I'm sorry about that. But I here's what I'll say. I can understand why they didn't mill a spot for the pocket clip, right? I, I get that. Left-handed, right, if you want to take the pocket clip off completely, right, if you just want to carry it. You don't want to carry it in the right-hand pocket and manipulate it with your left hand. Is it easy to manipulate? Yeah, so I am not left-handed. Uh, this knife is wonderfully, as you can see, wonderfully easy to manipulate with your left hand. So, holy cow, this is very good. My only real complaint with the design is the pocket clip, and the pocket clip is still decent. What's the price? Oh, by the way, are these made in the United States? No, they are not. So foreign made knives, do with that information what you will. I do not know who the OEM is, but they did an excellent job. Fit and finish all the way around with this guy is fantastic it's very good the action is very very smooth everything's nice and clicky solid no blade play by the way up down left to right we didn't talk about that centering is laser perfect and your lockup is coming in at something like 20 percent very 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 solid beautiful work these came in at 300 dollars uh yeah mm, i don't have a problem with that we're uh but it's just titanium but m390 <laughs> Ugh, man, I wish I didn't have to say this every single time I review something that's made of materials that are able to be picked up at a lower price point. But I do because there's always somebody who reduces the value of the item to just the materials. Titanium and M390 is not what's dictating the price on this. It's the final product, everything together, right? So you do have to consider the overall fit and finish quality, right? How much work goes into the uh, titanium, uh, in this case, the titanium scales, right? Surfaces on the inside of the pivot, right? Details on the blade, it, evenness in the final cutting bevel, all of those little teeny tiny things I look at, right? So while I have handled some less expensive knives uh, made out of the same materials, uh, a lot of times those knives, you know, from those companies just don't exhibit the same type of overall quality, everything being considered. This is really nice. I don't have uh, a problem with that $300 price tag, and I don't think you should either. I think this is really something wonderful. Um, and while the original design, the original original was definitely not 2021, and then the original through Urban EDC supply was likely 2020, but I don't know. 
This is definitely uh, one of my favorite things that I have handled in 2021. Since the design was not from 2021, I don't think, or at least the first version of this, I would go, you know, first version from Urban EDC Supply. I don't know if I can really put it on my list. It might make it in there as an honorable mention, but this is absolutely one of my favorite things that I've handled in 2021. Um, and I think people who pick this up will not be disappointed with it. Urban EDC Supply, I love this. I would definitely like to see a larger version, maybe eight inches, something maybe to think about. Obviously, I can't snap my fingers. They can't snap their fingers and make that happen. That would take a while, but it, it seems like this is pretty popular. Um, I think people might enjoy a larger version of it. I think, I think that that would be really cool, but I do love the size of this and I think this is going to cater to so many people and it's gorgeous. It's just a beautiful object. I, I love it. Highly recommendable. If the pre-order is still open, yes, go get it. This is going to go in my, uh, it's going to go in two playlists. Guys, I don't, I don't do this often nowadays. Uh, eat, Metal Complex's most recommended knives and my favorite knives of all time because this is definitely one of my favorite knives ever. So check out those playlists. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it today. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.